my eye just comes up with the paint. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I invite you to settle your hearts and minds as we worship the God who loves each and every one of us. Welcome to homecoming. Come on now, it's exciting. <laughs> Welcome to homecoming at Mount Olivet. It's a joy to see each and every one of you here. And a welcome to our internet worshipers who are joining us today. Uh, we pray that you will find a blessing in uh, sharing this time with us. So this is the 18th Sunday following Pentecost. Um, uh, the bulletins that you have, uh, I would call those keepers because there's a prayer on the back, which is a prayer from the Monacan Indian Nation that they sent us at the first worship service of the Monacan Trail Cooperative Parish. And we are all represented here today because Trinity and Batesville are joining in this celebration with us today which means that we're able to have our parish choir join us, uh, who, who sang for, for quite a while uh, into their smartphones and sent it to me for all those uh, virtual services during the pandemic. And now we're able to enjoy the beauty of their voices in person. Amen. So as Methodists, we have certain traditions that we do. Uh, way back in the 1700s somewhere, Charles Wesley wrote the hymn that we're going to open with this morning. It's number 553, and yet, are, and are we yet alive? Uh, it has since been sung at the opening of every conference, general conference, annual conference, district conference uh, within the church. Uh, I do have the lyrics on the screen for you, but you, there are the hymnals there if you prefer to have the music. So I invite you to stand as you're able and lift up your voices in praise. <laughs>
Thank you. Please be seated. I invite you to join me in our call to worship in your bulletin or your uh, responses. Let us draw near to God with sincere hearts. And let us encourage one another toward love and good deeds. Let us not neglect meeting together as some are apt to do. Yes, instead let us encourage each other as the blessed day approaches. Would you pray with me in unison? O oh God, we trust in your power to create, to sustain, to enable, but we could not trust if we did not know that you are always here. Be with us, Lord, as we gather here to worship you. Help us not to check our minds or our hearts at the door, but enable us to bring all that we are to you, so that we might experience your touch upon all aspects of our lives. We pray this because of and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite you to once again hear the voices of our parish choir. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. word my hope secure. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. sun forbear to shine but God who calls me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine Amen. It is okay to clap in recognizing their talents and gifts. You don't need my permission. <laughs> Our first uh, lesson this morning is from the Old Testament. I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 4, 
verses 20 through 27. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear towards my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of John. And I'll be reading from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, help us to know you. Help us to know the one who would love us so much that you would send your son to be among us, to teach us, to suffer for us, and to die so that we would have the means of salvation and eternal life. Take these words of mine and make them yours. We ask this in your name. Amen. any longer. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. I have. Then why didn't you tell her before? Because she wouldn't have believed me. She had to learn it for herself. Yes, I'm ready now. Then close your eyes and tap your heels together three times. And think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, There's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. 
Wake up, honey. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no Dorothy, Dorothy, dear. It's Aunt Em, darling. Oh, Aunt Em, it's you. I see the smiles. Did that invoke memories of home? <laughs> so I, I gave you what I would call uh, two minute bookends for an hour and 41 minute movie, The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. Why is that line so iconic? I imagine if you opened your bulletin uh, when you arrived and saw that the title of the sermon was There's No Place Like Home, you thought of The Wizard of Oz. Many of you found yourself remembering maybe as a child uh, watching Dorothy clicking her heels together. Maybe you experienced some sort of a flashback to those bookends that I gave you, and, but also in a flash, remembered everything between. Maybe it invoked earlier memories of time spent in fellowship and worship here at Mount Olivet. I remember as a young boy growing up on Gillespie Avenue in Charlottesville, Virginia, the excitement of finding the October issue of the TV Guide in the mailbox. You remember the TV guy? That was awesome. It was like a time machine for me. It allowed me to peer into the future. October's issue was especially important because I knew that one of the three or four channels that we could get, and you know, that's <laughs> all we got back then, that one of those channels that we received would be showing The Wizard of Oz during the week of Halloween. There were no VCRs or DVRs where we could record it. You had to be one with the TV. You had to be sitting in front of it when it aired to be able to watch it. You had to set that time aside in your life, aside from everything else, in the same way that you have set time aside this morning to be home here at Mount Olivet. And that's what I did as a boy. It didn't matter how many times I had seen it before. I sat in front of the TV when it came on and I watched it again. I recall that there were no commercial interruptions when I was a boy. Nowadays, that movie would take over two hours to show on their TVs. We had two TVs in that house on Gillespie Avenue and they were both black and white. I was actually a young adult before I realized that most of the Wizard of Oz was in color. I discovered it at a Halloween party. I walked past the living room where a bunch of kids had sat down and they were watching the Wizard of Oz. And I turned around to someone and I said, wow, they've colorized that movie. It's always been in color. <laughs> It brought a whole new perspective. I sat down with those kids in that room and watched it again and was surprised when it shifted back to black and white because I wasn't expecting that. Next month will be the 85th anniversary for the connection between Wizard of Oz and Halloween. And for those 85 years, the main message of the Wizard of Oz has always remained the same. There's no place like home. And that we all have the power to return to what truly matters to us. Glinda the Good Witch actually told Dorothy that you've always been able to go home. Now, home isn't always just a physical place. I think home is as much of a state of mind. 
I think it represents for us a place of comfort. You've talked about that this morning. Love is where we feel that we belong. You belong here today because you have chosen to call this place home. Somebody's calling home. <laughs> home is where we most often realize that we already possess qualities that we may have been looking for from outside sources. Qualities like courage, wisdom, qualities like a heart of compassion, Qualities that were sought by Dorothy's traveling companions that joined her as she navigated the yellow brick road. I think in this parable, and I think it's right to call the Wizard of Oz a parable of sorts. I think in the parable, the yellow brick road represents a path of enlightenment. It's long. It windy through places of challenge, danger ahead, roadblocks. There's obstacles along the way. But it ultimately takes Dorothy, her companions, and us to a place of truth. How many of you arrive here today after clicking your heels together and having traveled your own yellow brick road how many of you arrived here in anticipation of finding home? I think all of you did. In our gospel lesson, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his own return home. It'll be a journey of challenge and danger that is unimaginable. The closer they get to Jerusalem, the more he speaks of his impending uh, arrest, his torture, and execution. In the midst of his troubling prophecy, he tells his disciples this, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, I like to put myself in the text, and, and I'm thinking I'm, I'm somebody standing there, and I have to ask the question of Jesus. Why wouldn't they be troubled with these things that you are telling them? And his answer is, you believe in God, believe in me also. Can you imagine what it would have been like for God to pour God's self out, to empty God's self, to take on the form of being human? God confining himself to these, these frail, limited, weak bodies that we occupy. Can you imagine what it was like for God to leave God's home, heaven, and come live with us on this earth? But we can hardly imagine what that's like. Listen carefully to what Jesus tells us in verses 2 and 3. My father's house has many home rooms. That's an interesting slip of the tongue. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. Jesus is preparing a home for us. A home that we can hardly imagine. An eternal home. And he welcomes us to live with him forever. You see, this earth was not his home. It was temporary. It was temporary while he accomplished God's mission in this world. It's temporary for us also. There's no place like home. Can you say that with me? There's, There's no, no place, place like home. home. There's no place like home. 
Click your heels together. There's no place like home. In wrapping up today, I, I tried to invoke this black and white to color transformation on the front of your bulletin. The pencil drawing in the newly, is hanging in the newly renovated hallway. It was drawn by John Evans in 1986. Maybe as you have your conversations over the fellowship meal, you can discuss that. Maybe some of you can discuss why there was a log cabin on the screen for much of the service. I took the color photo after the completion of our renovations here, which you will see. You might consider that between those two pictures, there's a yellow brick road. Maybe this afternoon as you, as you rest and continue your Sabbath uh, practices, you recover from the meal, <laughs> take some time to reflect on what that journey may have looked like between uh, those two images, the challenges, the joys. It doesn't matter which picture you relate the most to, because either or both you can call home. And remember Glenda's words to Dorothy, you always could have returned home. Thank you for returning here today. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to join me on page two of the bulletin or confession. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. O gracious God, who knows the deepest places of our hearts, forgive us when we forget we are fearfully and wonderfully made, when we pretend you are not at the end of all our searching, when we give ourselves over to the whatever of our culture, Remind us that your knowledge of us is wondrous and not punitive, and that we are defenseless against your love. Continue to seek us out, even as we seek your face. Hear the good news. Once we were dead to all things that God had hoped for us. But in God's love, we are again brought to life. Rejoice. Christ our Lord has forgiven us and saved us from our sins. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to turn to page 13 of your, your hymnal. under the heading of the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, as he sat at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread. And he broke the bread. <laughs> and he broke the bread. Oh, that was feeding of the five thousand. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the dinner was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, and passed it to his disciples, telling them, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts through Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on those gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So as I invite our uh, stewards to come forward, uh, I want to let you know we're going to be celebrating um, by intinction today. Uh, you will be given a piece of bread, and then we ask that you dip that in the cup to receive the, the blood. And uh, if you prefer, we also have some prepackaged uh, cups here if you would prefer to take it that way. So uh, I invite you to uh, sell your hearts and minds as we receive God's gift for us.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this meal. We give you thanks for the, the sacrifice of your son, who through his sacrifice and his resurrection has given us the means of salvation and eternal life. We ask this in your name. Amen. So if anyone doesn't believe that God has a sense of humor, uh, I invite you to look at the crumbs <laughs> and the bread that God provided today. <laughs> so, oh man. so our uh, parish choir is going to sing again, but I'm going to ask you all to remain standing. And if you look on page four in your bulletin are the words that they're going to sing. Now, if any of you are inclined to clap or stomp your feet or anything like that, uh, just go for it. Okay? Amen. Or sing. That'd or be good too. Sing, yes. <laughs> Stomping. <laughs> Maybe you're famished, so that's good because because the time is drawn, drawn near. Um, so I, I again I thank all of you for for coming today, um, and I ask you to hear these uh, uh, words of benediction uh, as Addie prepares to uh, uh, carry Christ's light out into the world. Gracious Lord, you have given us great joy today. Let us carry that joy out to the world. Let us carry the joy of knowing you out into this world. And as we now move to a time of fellowship and meal, uh, we give you thanks for the food that has been provided for the hands who have prepared it for us. We pray that you will bless it to the nourishment of our bodies. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen.